This is Ganesh. Hope you are doing great. Happy to learn together. In this video, I'm going to explain how we can achieve the multiple entities in the post method. So we have uh, seen how to achieve a multiple entities like there is no dependency between each entity. So there is no common field. Uh, there are some scenarios where UI developer requires just send everything in one URI. If that is the case, we have to use this option. Okay. So, but if there is an association as in place, may saying that depends on the header entity, I want the item. So, based in that case, you have to go with the association concept and deep entity, normal deep entity method. But this is there is no dependency between two entities, but still UI developer requires instead of sending uh, more than one UI servers for different entity set, can you send everything in one UI service? So there could be some scenarios. If that is the case, go ahead with this option and how we can achieve the same process in the post method. So it's almost everything is same. So design, everything is same. Only the input we are going to see more on this particular video. Okay, let's get into the slides. So here, uh, this is a design. It's very old design. I'm just following the same for everything. It's a deep entity design. So SID item. This is actually a deep entity which has a dependency. So if you see, the SID is common in header, item, and shipping related information. So for this, normally we go with uh, deep entity, and using copy date to ref, we are sending the information from my internal table to your. So here, if you see, uh, this is the structure. Uh, our structure has no dependencies So field 1, field 2, field 11, 12, 13, 21, 22, 23. means different fields. There is no common fields in these areas. So this is one array. This is one array. Technically, we call it as this is one internal table. This is one internal table. This is the header information. Okay. And in ODATA level, as ACGG, ACGW project level, we are converting this as a different entity type. Entity type 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay. So now, how we are going to give the input data? So, because this, you know how to design it. We already done it. So, I'm going to use the same uh, ACGW project for this example also. Only thing is how we are going to pass a value uh, for the post method. Okay. So the idea is it's also similar. We have seen in the deep entity set post method, the same way we are going to use it. So here, um, field one and field two, just open this uh, curly braces and field one is the value. What is the field we have given in the design level? and the colon that's a value so these uh, double quotes colon and comma are very important if you miss anything you'll get an xml passing error while executing it so this is the value for my first entity and second entity uh, to be begin with a navigation path uh, so you have a navigation path between your entity one and entity two so you have to use that navigation path that is also within double quotes and colon uh, open up this uh, square bracket and these are records for your entity two um, internal entity two type okay or just internal tables so this is record one and comma if you feel you have to send more than one record and this is record two so probably I didn't change so here I just changed the uh, field to 12 and 13 value not to 11 one so just just that's a type just copy paste option Okay, so I have closed this um, with the square bracket. So this is for my second entity type, means technically second internal table data. And the third one I'm going to, here you have to use comma because it's going to be continued. Within single quotes, the navigation path between your entity two and entity three, and then value for the particular entity three uh, fields. Okay, so if you want to add one more record, just put a comma and add it. So this is the way where we are going to form uh, input data, especially for this type of multiple entity types in the post method. Okay. Okay. So the next one is, um, we have already done with this. So this is my input data. And finally, how we have to read this inside the method. So you know the method is create deep entity. So now we use get expanded entity set normally for the get method. For a post, it's a different method. It's coming under the same interface. 
uh, it's a create deep entity in that there is a, a method or i can say a method parameter called io input provider using that with the help of this read entry data i'm going to read this information that is going to come for this es data one of the parameters of the method and this is actually a type any so this is a dynamic so whatever you have passed that automatically adjusted with this internal table or I can say method parameter. So with the help of that, we are going to um, receive this inputs to an internal table inside the create deep entity method. So once you receive the value, then it's very simple. You can segregate based on your own requirement. Okay. So that's it. So let's see the same in the system as well. This is my system and this is the one we have used for the multi entity, multiple entity uh, type example. So the model you have seen here is I have three different entity uh, type one, two, three, and there is no common fields between these two entities or any, any of the entities. Okay. So these are field one and field two and field three and field four. So these are we have already seen. So same thing I'm going to use it for the post method also. And there is a navigation is also in place and association also in place. Okay, so this is our association between E1 and 2. So this is for um, E1 and 2 and this is for E1 and 3. So here it is. Okay, now let's go to the runtime artifact. And uh, here you have to redefine the method called create deep entity okay so okay it should be here i believe yes um under uh, service runtime interface so here it is a create deep entity so right click redefine and uh, whatever you call with the post method along with your entity so it just comes here okay so let me have a breakpoint let's see how it's it's comes inside and uh, how the data is captured then we can write the code to retrieve the data from your input to an internal table uh, have a breakpoint session breakpoint and this is already registered because we have used this service uh, so i'm going to just make use of that service <coughs> excuse me i'm going to call the service directly the registration is already done for this service so filter gi yeah this is the one go to sap gateway client okay so i have a deep entity uris got saved this one okay and execute so it works fine so now i'm going to um, use this for the post so for the post service you don't want to enter anything here so only the input we have to enter the values so you can use use as a request and change the value that is a one way so other way is the easiest way is like this you have to mention field one field one semicolon one two three I'm sorry okay so comma make sure uh, it's a case sensitive field two so you're giving the proper values a b c and uh, here i'm going to use my uh, navigation path uh, name okay so the, my navigation path name is np underscore e12 okay colon so the bracket square bracket so square bracket and here you can say field 13 i believe i'm not sure let me check it out and value okay so give me a minute okay so here it's field three four five six okay so go here field three and field four
Okay, so I want one more. So I'm going to use here. I'm, I want to give one more record. So it's going to be comma. So here you won't get the comma. Let's just do the copy paste. Field three, field four. This is my second record. Close it and I am closing my um, this bracket also. Okay. And then uh, navigation path between one and three. My bracket and open it. This is three, four, five, six. So values close it so this is only one uh, close this one as well as the main curly braces i believe it should be okay so let's see if you done any mistake over here definitely you will get an error saying say XML passing error let's see how it goes post method and no further uh, filters over here just execute yes exactly they're saying expecting comma or expected NP13, okay. NP13. Let's close, let's close over here. I believe it should be comma here. Execute. Yeah. So now the control comes to create deep entity method. Okay. So so far we are good. So now I'm just going to write a small code over there. So it shows is it doesn't return any business data. Obviously the method doesn't return uh, any data here because there is no code. So here I'm going to write the code. So for before that, I need an internal table to get the data. So input data type. The deep entity is already in place. So I'm going to make use of that over here. So probably if, if you follow or if you have seen the previous video, then you are able to map it easily. So MPC extension. And that is going to be TSD here. Okay. That's it. And using this data reference variable, IV data provider, it's coming under MPT entry provider, right? Okay. Control F6. Data provider. Entry provider, this one. And the method is read entry data. That's it. So here ES data as the method parameter. So through that parameter, I'm going to receive my values input data. Okay, so if you double click, it will take you to the deep structure which uh, I have created already. So this is the way it created. So header considering this is header. This is one internal table data. This is another internal table data. There is no common fields. So these are already in place. So go back and execute. Sorry, activate first. Then have a breakpoint. Okay, all set. Now still it's not returning any value, so you will get an uh, error 500 or error only. So at least you just know how the data is coming inside. So this is a one an input data. If you see the structure, that's how the deep is declared the same way. And uh, here I'm going to execute F6. Now double click. So these are the values filled only one. And I have entered uh, um, E12 between one and two entity type. I entered two values. And another internal table, I entered only one value. 
okay so now you have the data in create uh, deep entity method in this internal table now um, now it's very easy for you to segregate the data and make use of it based on your business requirement so this is a way we can use the multiple entity along with the post method i believe the remaining put or merge whatever it is delete it is going to be the same so just try this and if you have any doubt please let me know thank you so much for your time see you in the next video bye